Welcome back. We start our news bulletin from the US where over 1600 more people have died from COVID-19 as the country's death toll crosses 87,000. The global COVID-19 death count has crossed 307,000 with over 4.5 million infections. This report has details. The coronavirus pandemic has put all countries around the globe in an economic depression. President Donald Trump has promised the US will reopen its economy whether there is a vaccine or not. Meanwhile, the US House of Representatives has approved a 3 trillion dollars bill to provide more aid for battling the pandemic. Trump has vowed to block the bill, while House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said the far-reaching legislation will help local governments and others reeling from the pandemic. Losing a loved one, it doesn't take a pause. So many lives may have been saved if we had testing and and tracing and uh, treatment earlier on. And now that's a lesson to us that that's what we must do so that we can end this. But we don't end it by pausing in the fight. The European Union has proposed its next long-term budget to kickstart growth on the continent headed for its worst ever economic downturn. The bloc is negotiating on how much of the proposed recovery fund should be handed out as grants to member states and how much in loans. Meanwhile, an EU study reveals the pandemic has placed unprecedented strain on families and working life. The UK says the increased percentage of people working from home can help implement social distancing rules. And that shows that uh, 44% of employed adults are actually working from home compared to 12% last year. Um, this is a change in habit and we're expecting that people will maintain that and advising that they should. Uh, and it's probably going to be a successful way forward for us to control many of the social distancing measures over the next few months. Mainland China has reported 8 new coronavirus cases of which 6 are imported while 2 locally transmitted. Meanwhile in Pakistan almost 11,000 patients have recovered from COVID-19. The health ministry says the country's coronavirus death toll has reached 834 after 31 died overnight. The ministry reported over 1,581 infection cases in the last 24 hours bringing the total to nearly 39,000. It's that nearly 14,900 tests have been conducted overnight, taking total to nearly 360,000. Meanwhile, Pakistan's Economic Coordination Committee has approved the emergency cash assistance to the labor amid pandemic. Moving on, in India, the number of COVID-19 cases has risen to nearly 86,000, exceeding China's infections. The case is sought in India despite a strict lockdown in force since late March by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The officials said a third of the infections are from the western state of Maharashtra with Mumbai worst hit followed by Tamil Nadu, Gujarat and Delhi. Experts said India is in the growth phase since new infections are still rising and active cases are growing at 3.8% rate daily. They said this needs to fall to 0% subsequently for the country to recover overall. The authorities have reported over 2,700 fatalities across the country so far. In another news, U.S. Special Envoy Zalmi Khalilzad says a new date for intra-Afghan peace talks is under discussion. Talking to media, the envoy said the U.S. has heard positive reports about the formation of an inclusive Afghan government. Khalilzad said it will be the best if intra-Afghan talks begin while there is still a significant U.S. military presence in Afghanistan. The envoy said he will soon travel to push for a de-escalation in violence and the release of prisoners. Discussing recent attacks in Afghanistan, he said there are forces such as ISIS that do not want to see peace in the country. Meanwhile, the Pentagon said the U.S. is continuing its down-down of troops from Afghanistan and is expected to meet a timeline agreed with the Taliban. The United States officials say they will reduce to 8,600 troops by July 15th and abandon five bases. The European Union says it will make a diplomatic push to stop Israel from annexing parts of the occupied West Bank. During a bloc's meeting, EU's Foreign Minister Josep Borrell said the prospect of annexation violates international law. Borrell said the bloc will prevent Israel's incoming unity government 
from going ahead with a move that harms the chances of peace. He said the EU's diplomacy will involve talking to the US and Arab countries as well as Israel and the Palestinians. Germany's Foreign Minister Heiko Maas said the EU is committed to the goal of a negotiated two-state solution. Jordan has warned Israel of a massive conflict if it goes ahead with the annexation plans of the occupied West Bank. In an interview, King Abdullah II said there will be more chaos and extremism in the region if the Palestinian Authority collapses. The king said Jordan agrees with many European countries that the law of strength should not apply in the Middle East. He said the two-state solution is the only way to be able to move forward. Washington's plan, which favors Israel and was rejected by the Palestinians, gave a green light to annexation. Meanwhile, Israeli security forces fired tear gas shells on Palestinian protesters in the West Bank, injuring five. Two Iraqi soldiers have been killed in an ISIS attack in northern province of Saladin. The attack comes a day after three people were killed in two separate terror attacks by the ISIS in Iraq's eastern Diyala province. Talking to media, provincial security officials said terrorist attacks a controlled point in Dujjal district of the province. The officials said the attackers quickly fled after the ambush, but an operation has begun to apprehend them. ISIS captured Mosul, Saladin, Ambar provinces and certain portions of the Ala and Kirkuk in June 2014, which were gradually taken back by Iraq. Iran has sentenced a French-Iranian academic to six years in prison on national security charges. Fariba Dilkhair, a specialist in Shiite Islam and a research director at Sciences Po University in Paris, was arrested in June last year. Talking to media, her lawyer said Adilkhai is sentenced to five years for gathering and conspiring against national security. The lawyer said one year of jail has been given to the academic for propaganda against the Islamic Republic. He said his client is only to be expected to serve the five-year jail term, which he intends to appeal. Adekha's trial started on March 3rd, with the last hearing held on April 19th at Branch 15th of Tehran's Revolutionary Court. Yemen's government claims Houthi rebels have seized medical equipment aid by World Health Organization. In a statement, Information Minister Muammar al ariani said the WHO sent the medical goods and aid to hospitals and regions. The minister said rebels seized the equipment in order to send them to their own supporters. He asked the UN to condemn the move by Houthis and demanded the group to be enforced to send medical supplies back to hospitals. Meanwhile, the government says it is trying to figure out a disease of an unknown origin which has killed hundreds of people in current month in Aden. Officials say the mysterious outbreak can possibly be lung plague or chikungunya fever which is spread through mosquitoes. Turkey has criticized the EU over its Eastern Mediterranean statement, saying it is last example of a fruitless discourse. In a statement, Turkish Foreign Ministry spokesperson Hami Aksoy said the European Union's declaration serves no purpose. Aksoy said the approach encircled by Greece's illegitimate claims is not contributing to regional peace and stability. He said it is interesting, EU couldn't show unity over COVID-19, but doing it unconditionally when it is about Greek Cyprus. He said the bloc should act in line with Turkey and the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus legitimate rights and international law. Earlier, the bloc's foreign ministers published a declaration urging Turkey to respect EU countries' maritime jurisdiction and sovereignty in territorial waters. Brazil has reported record 15,305 COVID-19 cases in 24 hours, along with 824 deaths. Brazil's president, Jair Bolsonaro, is under intense pressure after downplaying the outbreak, asking citizens to ignore quarantine restrictions. Brazil's health minister, Nelson Taik, has resigned from his position less than a month after being appointed. 
Meanwhile, Colombia says it is collaborating with Hard Hit Brazil in an effort to find an increasing number of coronavirus cases. President Ivan Duque said a series of measures was agreed during a virtual meeting between Colombian and Brazilian officials. Brazil has reported over 220,000 infections and nearly 15,000 deaths so far. The Amnesty International says governments in Latin America have repressed civil liberties to implement COVID-19 lockdown measures. In a statement, Amnesty's America's director, Erika Guevara Rosas, said the group has verified nearly 60 such incidents in the region over the past seven weeks. Guevara Rosas said governments are using arbitrary, punitive and repressive tactics to enforce quarantine orders. She said mass detentions, unnecessary use of force and food shortages during lockdowns infringe the basic rights of the citizens. The rights group said security forces have repressed many demonstrations across the region by using tear gas and firearms against protesters. The amnesty warns such measures violate human rights and repression will ultimately be ineffective in containing the spread of the disease. We're taking a short break, but stay tuned for more news. Welcome back. Now, President Donald Trump says the U.S. is working with other countries to develop a vaccine for coronavirus. Talking to reporters at the White House, the president said Washington is also preparing for the vaccine's distribution once it is ready. Trump said a list of 14 promising potential vaccines has been made, which will be narrowed further. Answering media questions, Trump said he is considering making the vaccine available free of charge. We're looking at that, actually, but we're making a lot of progress on vaccines. But we'll be speaking to you very soon, and I think we're going to have a very good couple of meetings at Camp David. Thank you. COVID-19 pandemic can only be beaten with equitable distribution of medicines and vaccines. Moving on to China, which has called on UN member states to fulfill their financial obligations, saying the U.S. owes the organization more than $2 billion. In a statement, Beijing said Washington owes $1.165 billion under UN regular budget and $1.33 billion for peacekeeping budget. The U.S. mission to the UN dismissed the call saying China is eager to distract attention from its cover-up and mismanagement of the COVID-19 crisis. In a report on May 11th, UN Chief Antonio Guterres warned there may be significant delay in payments of peacekeeping operations around the world. On Thursday, 50 of the 193 member states, including China, paid their contributions in full. The U.S. is the biggest contributor to the U.N. budget, paying 22% of its annual running costs and 25% of its peacekeeping operations. 24 migrants have died and dozens other were injured in a road accident in India's northern state of Uttar Pradesh. Police said the accident occurred after the laborer's truck collided with another vehicle in Oraya district. Talking to media, police said most of the migrant workers are from Bihar, Jharkhand and West Bengal states. The local doctor said 22 people have been admitted to the hospital, among which 15 are in critical condition. Meanwhile, hundreds of migrants are seen walking through River Yamuna in Haryana to reach their homes in Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. The workers, many carrying their children on heads, have decided to cross the river as many interstate borders are sealed. Nigeria says its armed forces have killed 61 members of Boko Haram in the country's northeast over the past week. In a statement, the defense ministry said it carried out operations against Boko Haram in Adamawa state. The ministry said 11 terrorists have surrendered while a huge cache of ammunition belonging to the group was seized. It said a total of 603 terrorists have been in a rehabilitation program after surrendering to the government. Boko Haram launched an insurgency in 2009 in northeastern Nigeria, prompting a military response. The UN says more than 30,000 people have been killed and nearly 3 million displaced in a decade of Boko Haram's terrorist activities. 
The UN says few children are getting vaccinated in Congo and the COVID-19 pandemic is almost certainly going to make matters worse. In a statement, the UN Children's Fund said if the trend continues, diseases such as polio, chickenpox and measles can research. It said children's lives are at stake as COVID-19 restrictions hamper the delivery of vaccines that are already in short supply. The UNICEF says Congo risks losing its polio-free certification and measles and yellow fever can return to epidemic levels. The body urged the government of DRC to launch catch-up campaigns and intensify immunization efforts to reach all children with vaccines. It has also called on international donors to step up their multi-year contributions to the effort. China has asked the U.S. to stop the unreasonable suppression of Huawei and Chinese enterprises. This comes after Washington announced new export controls to restrict the tech giant's access to semiconductor technology. In a statement, the foreign ministry said Beijing will firmly uphold Chinese firms' legitimate and legal rights and interests. The ministry said the Trump administration's actions are destroying global manufacturing supply and value chains. The new restrictions will cut off Huawei's access to one of its major suppliers, the Taiwanese chipmaker. Meanwhile, White House advisor Larry Kudlow said the US-China phase one trade deal is not falling apart and the two countries are working to implement it. Latam Airlines Group is set to lay off 1,400 employees. That is about 3% of the company's workforce. In a statement, airline CEO Roberto Alvo said the board has no option but to downsize the company. Latam has already halved the wages of its 43,000 employees and now it has become the first airline in the region to announce layoffs. But there are several other airlines that are not paying employees, neither have they formally let them go. Brazil's Azul SA says it has 78% of its employees on unpaid leave while about half of Avianza Holdings employees remain unpaid. Meanwhile, Air Canada is laying off approximately 50 to 60 percent of its employees from June 7. In a memo sent to all staff, the company said 20,000 employees will be affected by the move. Now let's look at the weather from around the globe. This is all for now. For the latest updates, you can follow us on social media at Indus.news.